Okay, welcome. So we're going to pick up where we left off in this tutorial, and we are going to be focusing a bit more on Bolt and how to do game level um, events, or at least in this case, it'll probably just be focused on scene level, but we'll talk about going further than that in the future. So scene level things, like say things that you need to you don't, it's, they're not necessarily assigned to one object, but you want to be able to keep track of them during the entire scene. And so um, one of those things in our case is going to be a countdown timer. We want to be able to see the time, count time down, and, um, and then do something when the time runs out. The other thing that we need to do is we need some way of scoring, right? In this case, you know, we're, we're using this as a way of, um, you know, and basically scoring is something where, yes, it's definitely more game focused, but if you're doing something other than a game, you're creating some other type of interactive experience. It's also good to know just how to keep track of things that have happened, right? You may, you know, you the character may pick up an object, or maybe there's skills that have been achieved, or um, positions that have been passed. Right. So maybe there's a trigger point at some point, and you want to make sure that if the person's been in this zone in the in your world, then it changes something that goes forward in the future. And so we need to be able to keep track of that. And sometimes you could keep track of that on the player, but it's oftentimes a lot easier to have something else that keeps track of all those things. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create, and you'll see I have some stuff in here that's grayed out. That's those, those things we're going to be recreating um, in a little bit. Um, but sp the first thing we're gonna create is something called a game manager. And a game manager isn't an actual object that you can find under game objects or under assets. What it is, is it's an empty game object that is going to house a bunch of Bolt scripts or Bolt graphs that um, will allow us to keep track of things, right? So there's no object that we can see. There's nothing that can be interacted with. It's just a completely empty object. Now, these empty objects, there's lots of reasons to use empty objects. This is just one of the use cases is where you need something to house all of this but you don't want it tied to some physical object in, in, in the game or in the experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Create Empty. And <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna do is change the name. So it's named Game Object. I'm gonna come over here to the Inspector and I'm just gonna call it Game Manager instead. You can either put a space in there or not. It doesn't really man matter. It doesn't really manager. Um, so we're gonna create a Game Manager and then um, right now, there are absolutely no components to this, right? It's totally empty. So what we're going to need to do is we're definitely going to need to add a graph. And we're going to do, um, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go down to, because that was a search I did earlier, we're going to go to Bolt. And we're going to go to Flow Machine. Now, previously, we've used a macro, which basically means that it's tied to that one particular object. Whereas if we change this to an embed, um, and let's just call this um, game management or something like that, um, we could split these up into different ones for time and score, but we're going to do them all together because why not? Um, and so uh, there's no file to save, right? There's no macro file. But this allows us to access other objects in the game and for other objects to be able to access this as well. So it makes it a little bit um, easier to use And so um, for this use case. So let's go ahead and click on Edit Graph. Right? And so it's going to start us with a start event and an update event. And we're not going to worry about those yet. What we're going to need to do is we need um, a way to the first thing we want to do is we want to set up our timer. And so we're going to do this down here first and eventually we and then we will add a UI element that's going to keep track of time and then eventually that will add a score onto that as well. But so to start with, let's go ahead and create this time element. Now surprisingly enough, 
if you um, you the time when you're trying to deal with time you want time so I'm going to right click click on add unit I'm going to type in capital T I M E and then I'm going to say time dot T I M E so time dot time get is the one that we want and what this does and it tells you over here in the inspector is it um, gives you the time at the beginning of this frame and this is the time in seconds since the start of the game. Okay, so basically every time, every frame that loads, right, of this game, we're going to get um, an updated time. And it's going from whenever this event started. Okay, so we need time. We need um, a way, a place to store that time. And because we, and then we need a way to display that time as well. So, and so let's go ahead and create a variable that we can use to, to store time and to um, view time. And it's just going to be a little bit easier to have a variable that we're feeding time into. And so um, the first thing we're going to do is we don't want this to be a graph variable. We don't want this to be an object variable. We're going to want this to be a scene variable. And you can see I actually have a couple here that I'm using. <laughs> um, but so what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new variable name. Oh, and of course, I always forget. You just have to type in first before you hit plus. So time, I'm going to call it time up um, only because I already have time out. And I don't want to reuse that. And then the type is going to be a float. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this down. And so there's this get time up variable. And what I'm going to do just to start is just link. Oh, maybe I can't do that. Is um, so this is to get this variable. What I want to do is set this variable. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to click add unit and I'm going to say um, set and I just say if I set say set variable you'll see that I have options here I have set flow variable set graph variable set scene variable that's what I want to do All right so I want to set the scene variable and um, this is and so I want to set the scene variable and I want to set it to time so first I need to choose a variable so I can click here and I can just go to time up um, because all the scene variables should be available if I have seen. You can see that I also have flow, graph, object, etc. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and say this is the value, and I want the value to be put in there. And I want this to happen every time a frame updates. So I'm going to go ahead and have my flow go from update to end of this variable. All right, so I've got this variable here. Um, and it's being set. So even with just this much um, going on, let's go ahead and run this. Because we'll be able to see that value here as it increments. And so you can see it's going really quickly. Okay, so I had a bit of an interruption <laughs> in the middle of this, um, but that's all right. You can see how long the interruption was here because it currently says, I think, 560 seconds. So I just left this running in the background, but something I want to show you is, right, so we've got the value changing here, and we're putting it into this time up variable, scene variable over here. And so what we can do is in our variables, you might notice that nothing's up here, and that's because whenever you hit play, it jumps back to the graph variables for some reason. So if I go over to scene, um, and I scroll down a touch, you'll see that time up is continuing to increment. And so I can watch that increment, the value change over here as well. And that's just a note as to where that changes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. And now that I've stopped that, um, I need to do a couple things. So first, I would like to send this up to some element here on the screen so I can actually watch it happening. Right, because we're keeping track of time, but right now it's incrementing, right? It's counting up. Eventually we want it to count down, and we probably don't need it to be counting down with a huge decimal point behind it. And so we'll look at how to do that as well. But first we're going to need a place to put it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the um, top of the screen. I'm going to go to Game Object. I'm going to come down to UI, which 
hopefully that should all be installed. If not, we will figure that out when we get to it. I'll maybe I'll ask you all to take a look tomorrow. Okay, so UI, um, and we're gonna go to text, and we're gonna use Text Mesh Pro. Um, if for some reason Text Mesh Pro is not an option there, um, which I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and I'm gonna talk about what all just happened as soon as, um, as soon as I do this other part. So if that didn't, um, if that wasn't available, go to the package manager and I just want to, and I'm just going to check this now, um, but I'm going to say text mesh pro. Okay. So there is a package, um, which is hard to see right now. There we go. There is a package called text mesh pro. So if you search for text in your package manager, you can, um, go in here and it looks like I could actually update this. There's like a minor change. Um, I'm not going to do that right away. Um, but so there's Text Mesh Pro and you just select it and then instead of remove there would be an install so you would click install and then just install everything that it asks you to install. Um, okay so once you've done that <clears throat> you'll see that <laughs> One, I have this new text. The other thing you might notice is that in my game window, this this is currently keeping the right proportions and it's keeping a 16 by nine proportion. And the way that you do that is in the game menu right next to where it says display one, there's the 16 nine, right? Before it was free aspect. So it's just sort of like whatever um, scale this is. And you'll note that sometimes the text is in and sometimes it's out of view. Um, and we're going to fix some of those things. So first, change free aspect to say 16.9. Um, that's a good, that's a pretty standard resolution. That's what HD video and all of that is, right? Okay. So then what, when I created that text um, object that I want to use, the Text Mesh Pro, you'll see that it also created an event system and this canvas, and it made the text a child of the canvas. So with with UI elements, with the with the traditional, the older style um, UI system, um, the canvas is what holds all the UI elements. So if you have text, if you have images, if you have like backdrops for menus and a bunch of buttons on there and ch and all of that stuff, it all gets housed within the canvas, right? This, what's nice about this is then you just hide this and your UI elements are tucked away. Right. We we're only going to have one right now, so it's not the, not the end of the world. And something else is if I select this canvas and I zoom out on my <laughs> window, you'll see I have this absolutely enormous um, frame here. And if I double click on the word canvas, it'll actually zoom out to a point where I can see this entire frame, right? It's, it's huge. And um, there are several different settings over here that we need to talk about. So I'm, I've got the canvas selected. And right now this is screen space overlay. The target is display one. Um, we don't need to worry about sort order or pixel perfect at this point. If I check mark pixel perfect, we're not going to notice any real difference at this point. Um, one thing we want to note is the render mode. There's screen space overlay. There's screen space camera, which um, right now doesn't make any changes at all because we have to choose the camera. And there's world space. Now, and again, it requires, this requires a camera. So let's go ahead and go to screen space um, camera. And then let's go ahead and choose the camera that we need to use, which is going to be our main camera, right? This is, and we're using this render mode because this is the overlay for the primary camera in our scene that our player is looking through. And we want to have this like heads up style display or at least know our, the score and the time, right? So I'm gonna click on the main camera. I'm gonna drag this over and I'm gonna drop it in here. And when I do that, you'll see things change pretty quickly. So if I am in my scene view here and I, um, use some hand, use the hand tool and, and the rotate tool, you'll see that this window is now behind, down below the plane at an angle, 
Why is that? Well, it's that way because that's the direction the camera is looking. So if I have my camera selected and I use the move tool or something else that gives me um, some visible <laughs> marker of this tiny, tiny camera, you can see that I've got my camera um, hovering over here and this is the direction and it's pointing that way. Now, the issue is if I select the canvas is that this is far too far away for what we're interested in. And that's where this plane distance of 100 comes in. Let's set the plane distance to one. All right, as soon as I do that, you'll see my new text pops up in the corner of my screen. Um, I could go, I mean, I can go probably down to 0 0.01, um, but that's a little bit too close. 0 0.1 is probably too close. It looks like one is probably as close as we want to get, All right? So I'm gonna keep it at one, and that's gonna just have this, if I zoom in now in my, um, on my canvas, All right? You'll see here's my camera, and basically it's just fit to the view. Um, everything's in front of the ground plane and all of that, we're, we're in a good location. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here. Now what I need to do is move and modify this text. So if I select the text object, you'll notice I can actually, I can do a couple of things. First, um, there's a couple ways to quickly move um, an object around the scene. I can manually move it, right, by actually clicking and dragging on these arrows to move it around. Um, I'm gonna undo the last few of those. If I come up here to the inspector and I click on this middle center option, and if I hold down, you'll see this, there's these anchor presets, right? Which, you know, we're not necessarily really going to use the anchors too much right now. But the, if I hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and click on one of these, it'll actually move this to wherever in the plane I select, right? So this is a quick way to, you know, cram something up into the corner. Now, I... Um, what I, I don't want this to be this uh, flush to the corner. I do want it to be about that height. So and now I can just manually pull this out a little bit, right? Just a touch. Um, the other thing is I know I'm gonna need this to be larger at some point and we'll, we'll deal with that when the issue comes. But so I have all of these options. So th this is the numerical value for my position of X and Y. And I can actually move things around in the Z dimension as well, although, um, which is forward and backward in this plane, um, which we're not going to worry about right now. We don't need to have three-dimensional stuff on there. Then there's the width and height. That's the size of the text box, right? So um, if I was to continue type, oops, if I was to come down here to where it says text input and say, hello, blah, 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 blah. Right. What happens is it goes until you can see in the window here, it'll come up to here and then it'll start to wrap. It'll get to that same boundary and start to wrap and wrap and wrap. And this is right. It's by default. It shows everything, even if it doesn't fit within the text box, but it won't go any longer. But if I click on this little line here, right. And granted, maybe if I put a couple spaces in, oops, put a couple spaces in here, I'd probably be better off. Um, oh, let's try this again. So I'm just going to create a few words. And so you can see that, right, so now I've got, I can fit more characters across the top. All right, so I'm going to leave everything else alone there. Um, we don't, I'm, we're not pivoting. We're not going to worry about too much about anything else right now. We're just going to try and keep this as simple as possible. So the text I do want to put in here is I want to put, I want to type in time, colon, and then just a zero to start with. And then I'm gonna do score space colon and a zero to start with. All right, so these are the things that we're gonna have in there. We're gonna just leave the default font. We could make this um, a little bit smaller. That's a pretty large score. So if I set this to a font size of 24, I actually like that a little bit better. Um, and then this vertex color option here allows you to choose the color. So I'm gonna make mine teal just because I know that's gonna stand out against the um, purple there pretty well. Okay, now I could. there's a lot of other settings here um, that 
we're not going to worry about right now. And in fact, I can pull this down and even more settings show up. Um, so, but we're at this point, we're good. We've got what we need. We've got this, the text mesh object up here. The only other thing we should do is actually, I'm just going to leave the, uh, we could rename it, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is right now. Okay. So we've got this thing and we need to be able to, um, to access it in here in order to make changes. Now, when you go to do this, um, what's going to happen is if I type in text mesh pro, I actually have these options. However, um, in your case, you will not have those options. And so how do we add more things to Bolt to get these things in, right? This is an external package that we installed and in, that we need to use, um, that we want to use um, to do this, and we'd love to be able to use it with Bolt. So how do we do that? What we do, so we go up to Tools, we go to Bolt, and we go to the Setup Wizard. This is the same Setup Wizard that we used previously. And we just say Next. And we did programmer naming, so that's what we're going to leave it at. But now we have all these assembly options. And what we need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see my last option here is unity.textmeshpro. And so what you need to do is, if this isn't on here, you need to click the plus sign. And where it says no assembly, you need to just say unity dot and then text mesh pro. And you can see that even though I've got it, it's giving me the option to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. Um, but you're going to select that so that it gets added on. Um, and it should then put this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit escape in my case because I'm not adding it and I'm going to subtract it. All right. So Unity Text Mesh Pro and then I click Next. And this is all going to stay exactly the same. And I click Generate. And it'll take a second. Um, and then it'll generate this, it'll add all those new things um, so that you can do Text Mesh Pro and you can actually access them through Bolt, which is pretty amazing. It actually takes all the, the packages and figures out how to make units out of them, um, which is pretty amazing. You can see it says converting code base to unit options. So it's a really smart, um, well-crafted piece of software. It's not, it, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm kind of falling in love with it the more I use it. Um, okay, so now that we've got that installed, so let's go back to our game manager. There we go. Okay, so we're on our game manager, and so we need to, we need to be able to access this and to actually set and update the text in here. So how do we do that? So we right-click, we click Add Unit, and we type in Text Mesh Pro, and what we want is we don't want just the text mesh pro we actually want the text mesh pro u gui and i only know this because of another tutorial so i want text mesh pro u gui and then i want dot set text so text mesh pro dot u right so this is this is what it should look like text mesh pro u gui dot set text and what that does is it gives me a whole set of possibilities here and so what this means is um these are the inputs right that we can that we can um things we can change in this module and so there's this option that says text and then arg zero text sounds pretty that sounds like the text you would input right which it is arg zero is a little bit more confusing though what that means is argument zero and that's a it's something that is used um, as another way to talk about either an argument or a parameter or um, a variable or you know something and so this argument zero is what we're going to be able to take the value of this time up variable and we're going to be able to dump that in there and then it's going to get added in to the text up top but we know that we're actually going to have a second argument, right? Eventually, we're going to want the score to be one of the values that gets updated as well. And so, um, so let's go ahead and you can see there's a bunch. We could have up to seven or eight arguments. We're just going to go with two to start with. So I'm going to click on this. So now it should say, right now it says self and then it says text and arg zero and arg one. 
So what we need to do to set this next step up is to click on the um, click on the little dot here, and it's going to isolate out the only objects that are possible. Now, I've done this previously, so I have the score object. We're not going to worry about that. This is the one we're currently using, so we're going to click on that. And now what we need to do is we need to add the text that we're going to use, and we need to figure out how to get these arguments into that text. And so what we're going to do is we know that this is the format that we want up here, the time space colon space zero, space score, space colon space zero. All right, so how I do this is I, is I start just typing in the text time space colon space, and then this is going to be my arg zero, right? This is where I want to put the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an opening squiggly bracket, the number is zero and a closing squiggly bracket. And th that little set of symbols tells this unit that I should take arg zero and put it in there. Then I'm gonna hit space and I'm gonna go ahead and hit and type in score, space, colon, space, squiggly bracket one, squiggly bracket. And so this tells me that argument one should go in here. Now, right now we don't have an argument one. So we're just gonna set the score to 35, um, which just means that with these being set to zero um, before it starts playing, as soon as this gets triggered, this will jump to 35. So we at least know that it's working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the value out of here. I'm gonna drop it into arg zero. That should just work. Um, if not, well, we'll figure it out. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to drop this into the flow. Okay, so now let's go ahead and zoom all the way out real quick and actually maybe zoom in on this a touch so it's a bit more visible. I'm going to hit play and hopefully our time will continue to increment. Okay, our time is incrementing. However, we probably don't need the player to see every single point, like it's seven points after the decimal point. And you'll notice it's also making this super twitchy. And that's because occasionally there's less decimal points here um, because these are, are zeros. And so it kicks over and it spreads out. We don't want that to happen, right? We want this to stay pretty stable. And there's probably a couple other ways that I need to look at to set the number of values that are in here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do the simpler form right now. So we're going to go ahead and stop this. And so what we need to do is we need a way to take this value that's coming out of here that's a decimal value and just all we want are seconds. So we want to chop off the rest of that. And there's a couple mathematical units that will help us do that. So if I click, if I right click and go to add unit and just go down to math, we have a bunch of options in here. There's two options that would potentially work. One is called seal, like ceiling, and one is called floor, like the floor. If I, let's go ahead and create a floor object. When I do that, you'll note that when I come over here, I get in the graph inspector, it tells me what this does, and it says, returns the largest integer smaller than or equal to f. And if we look over here, f is the input value, right? And so, it's going to return whatever is um, largest, <laughs> the largest integer that's smaller than that. So if this was, you know, 0 0.99, it's going to be giving us a 0. As soon as it's 1.01, .01, it's going to give us a 1 until it gets to 2.0, at which point it will give us a 2. Right? So that basically just eliminates um, the decimal places. So what we'll do is we'll come down here, we'll drop this in here. We will then take this and put it back to arg zero. And then we just need to make sure our flow goes through here as well. So I'm just gonna connect that there and connect this here and maybe stretch this out so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so now when we go ahead and play this, we should be able to get a even <laughs> time. Okay. Right, so now our time is counting up. 
and that's pretty fantastic. It's nice and smooth and even. Now notice once it gets to 10 or 11 or 12, we get a little bit of wiggle um, from this. Now we could have two text mesh pro elements, one for time and one for score. So we could actually have those separated out a little bit. So this one isn't being shifted left or right based on the value of this. Um, but we're gonna keep them together for now um, because we're being lazy and it just makes our lives a lot easier. Okay, so this is counting up. So how would we get this to count down? Let's say that we, you know, what's our maximum number? Let's say, you know, as for the project that you all are working on, um, 60 seconds would be the timeout that we want. So let's have this be a countdown timer. So, you know, how would I know how many seconds are left if there's 59 seconds and 60, right? I'm gonna want, what I want to do is be subtracting the current time from that from the 60 seconds that um, I want so from that total 60 seconds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click I'm going to say add unit and I'm just going to say subtract and I won't even get all the way there and what I want to do is rather than do this in math generic I want to make sure I do this in math scalar and that's just because what it does is it allows me to set values in here, whereas the other option doesn't necessarily do that. And so what I need to do is first, I need to say, okay, what's the value that I want to, sub that I want to subtract um, from? And that value, right, if I want the, to the maximum number to be 60, then I want to be subtracting this. So if this is 60 and then, you know, one second has passed, then it's 59 and 58 and 57, et cetera. So let's go ahead and say 60. And then the number we're going to be subtracting from 60 is going to be this number that comes out of the floor function. Right, so I'm going to say floor, and then I just need to connect this up to arg0. Okay, so now if I run this, it should be counting down. Now at this point, there is nothing to stop it from counting down below zero. Right, it's going to I'm not going to wait for the whole 60 seconds to go by, but you can see that it's working, right? But when we get down to zero, it's just going to keep counting down and keep subtracting, right? So it's going to, or it's going to be counting up. So, right, so the value is going to get to say 61, and then we're going to have a negative one up here, and then a negative two, negative three, et cetera. Um, so the next step in this will be to figure out what to do once our timeout counter um, reaches the end and how we can tell it to do something based on it running out of time.